Hello everyone. Today we are going to derive the stiffness matrix for the beam element. We are going to use the slope deflection equations. Let us consider a span AB in a beam having the length of L. In the point A, there will be a moment MAB. This is the equation to find that. And in the point B, there will be a moment that is MBA. And this is the equation to find that. M of AB and M of BA are the fixed end moments at A and B respectively. Theta A and Theta B are the slopes at A and B respectively. 6EA delta upon L square is the moment due to sinking of support or settlement. E is the Young's modulus and I is the moment of inertia. Using these two equations, we are going to derive the stiffness matrix. Let us consider a beam element AB of span L. In the beam element, both of the ends are free. As we saw just before, we are going to use these two equations. You can see that in the beam element, there is no load. So the fixed end moments will be zero. M of AB will become zero and M of BA will become zero. So this is the equation we are going to find the moment MAB. And this is the equation we are going to use to find MBA. You can easily memorize both of the equations. There is only one change. Here you can see that 2 theta A plus theta B. And here it is 2 theta B plus theta A. That is the only change. The rest of them are the same. In the equations, delta is the settlement. Delta can be negative or positive. In the beam, we are going to give the settlement in the upward direction. The reason we will know after some time. If the upward settlement occurs on the left side, that is in the point A, the settlement will be negative. And if it occurs on the right side, that is at the point B, the settlement will be positive. The ends A and B are free. That means there is no support. The free end will not give any protection for rotation, settlement or deflection. To keep the free end protected, we have to give fixed supports. Here you can see that on both of the ends, I have given fixed supports. This beam is called fully restrained structure. In the fixed support, there will be vertical reaction, horizontal reaction and movement. As long as there is no horizontal load, we should not consider the horizontal reaction. Only we have to take the movement and vertical reaction. Here I have only taken the vertical reactions and the movements. Let us keep the vertical reaction at A as RA and at B or B. I have assumed both of them to be upwards. So if you get the vertical reaction in the upward direction, that will be positive and if you get the vertical reaction downwards that should be taken as negative. MAB is the moment at A and MBA is the moment at B. You can see that I have kept both of them in the clockwise direction. If you get the positive movements that means they are in the clockwise direction and if you are getting negative movements that means they are in the anti-clockwise direction. This is the stiffness matrix we are going to derive. There are four unknowns to be found out. Let us keep RA as number one, MAB as number two, RB as number three, and MBA as number four. So the first row and the first column goes to RA. The second row and the second column goes to MAB. The third row and the third column goes to RB. The fourth row and the fourth column goes to MBA. Now let us see how to find the elements in the matrix. For the vertical reactions, we need to give vertical unit displacement. For the movements, we need to give unit rotation. For example, the first row and the first column goes to RA. RA is a vertical reaction. So to find these elements, we need to give vertical unit displacement in the direction of RA. RA is acting upwards, so we need to give vertical displacement in the upward direction. 
you can see that I have applied unit vertical displacement at upward direction at A. I have given the displacement in the upward direction that is in the direction of RA. Unit displacement means unit R1. Now we are going to find the moment MAB using the slope deflection equation. Here you can see that we have settlement. The settlement occurs on the left side. If the upward settlement occurs on the left side, delta will be negative. Here the settlement delta is 1. As per this rule, we have to keep that as negative. For delta, we can apply minus 1. So that we will get this. What about this one? If there is a fixed support, there will be no slope. In the points A and B, we are having fixed supports. In the point A, we have only given the vertical displacement. We did not give any slope. In this case, the slope theta A and theta B will be 0. So this term totally becomes 0. In this way, for MAB, we will get minus 6A upon L square. Since it is negative, the movement should be applied in the anticlockwise direction. Now we are going to find MPA. We know that theta B and theta A are 0 and delta E is minus 1. So we will get minus 6EI upon L square. This one also we have got negative. That means the movement is acting in the anticlockwise direction. To find RA, I am going to take movement about B. In this case, we are moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RA is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is L. So RA into L. Both of the movements are acting in the anticlockwise direction. So both of them are negative. Finally for RA, we will get 12 EI upon L cube. Since it is positive, our assumption is correct, RA is acting upwards. Now we need to apply this rule and find RB. RA and RB are acting upwards, so both of them should be positive. We can take this term on the other side, so it will come as negative. For RB, we have got a negative value. That means our assumption is incorrect. RB is not acting upwards, it is acting downwards. We have to change the direction. You can see that I have changed the direction of RB. Now we can fill up this row. RA is acting upwards, so it should be taken as positive. MAB is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it should be taken as negative. RB is acting downwards, so it should be taken as negative. And finally, MBA is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that also should be taken as negative. In the similar way, we can fill the column also. For RA, we need to apply this, but we have done previously already. MAB is negative 6EI upon L square. RB is negative 12EI upon L cube. And finally, MBA is negative 6EI upon L square. Now, we are going to find the elements in the second row and in the second column that belongs to MAB. We know that for the movements, we need to give unit rotation. The moment MAB is located in the point A, so we have to apply unit rotation at A. Because of the unit rotation, the beam will go like this. In the point B, we have fixed support. We know that in the fixed support, there will be no slope. Let us use the slope deflection equation. Here you can see that either in the point A, or in the point B, there is no settlement. So delta will become 0. That means this term becomes 0. In the point A, we have unity slope. So theta A will be 1. And in the point B, there is no slope. So theta B will be 0. 2 into 1, it will be 2. In this way, for MAB, we will get 4 EI upon L. This is positive. That means MAB will be acting in the clockwise direction. Now let us find MBA. We know that delta A is 0, theta B is 0, and theta A is 1. In this way for MBA, we will get 2 EI upon L. Since it is positive, MBA also will be acting in the clockwise direction. 
from the point A, let us take a moment about to B and to find R A. R A is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is L. Both of these two moments are acting in the clockwise direction, so both of them should be positive. For R A, we will get a negative value, that means our assumption is incorrect. We assumed that R A is acting upwards, but actually it is acting downwards. We have to change the direction of R A. Let us apply this rule and to find out R B. R A is acting downwards, so it will be negative. R B is acting upwards, so it will be positive. For R B, we will get a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. It is acting upwards. Now let us fill the second row. R A is 6 A upon L square, but it is acting downwards, so it should be negative. But this one we have already found in the previous step. So we have to just verify this element. Here also we have got the same one. Our process is correct. MAB is acting in the clockwise direction. So it should be positive. RB is acting in the upward direction. So it should be positive. MBA is acting in the clockwise direction. So it is also positive. Now let us enter these two members. RB is acting upwards, so it should be taken as positive. And MBA is acting in the clockwise direction, so that is also positive. Now we are going to find the third row and the third column that belongs to RB. We know that for vertical reactions, we need to give vertical unit displacement. You can see that in the point B, I have given vertical displacement of unity in the direction of RB. Let us find MAB. We know that if the settlement occurs on the right side in the upward direction, delta will be positive. So for delta, we have to apply 1. In this way, we will get 6 A upon L square. Theta A and theta B are 0. So this whole term will become 0. So for MAB, we will get this. In the similar way, we can find MBA. Theta B and theta A are 0. So this whole term will become 0, delta is 1. So for MBA, we will get 6 A upon L square. For MAB and MBA, we have got the same value. Also it is positive. That means both of the movements are acting in the clockwise direction. To find RA, I am going to take movement about to B. RA is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is L. Both of the moments are acting in the clockwise direction, so both of them are positive. For RA, we will get a negative value. That means our assumption is incorrect. RA is acting downwards. Here you can see that I have changed the direction of RA. By applying this rule, we can get RB. For RB, we will get a positive value. That means the assumption is correct. It is acting upwards. Let us fill the third row. These two we have already found in the previous step, but let us verify one more time. RA is acting downwards, so it should be taken as negative. MAB is acting in the clockwise direction, so it should be taken as positive. RB is acting upwards, so it should be taken as positive. MBA is acting in the clockwise direction, so that is also positive. In the similar way, in the column also, we can check these two members. Let us enter K43. MBA is acting in the clockwise direction. So that should be positive. In the stiffness matrix, only one element is missing. We are going to find that now. Now we are going to find the elements in the last row and the last column that belongs to MBA. We know that for movements, we need to give unit rotation. You can see that I have applied unit rotation at B. We have to apply the unit rotation in the clockwise direction. Let us find MAB. Delta will be 0. Theta A will be 0. Theta B will be 1. For MAB, we will get 2 EI upon L. Let us find MBA. We know that Theta B will be 1. Theta A will be 0. And Delta will be 0. For MBA, we will get 4 EI upon L. Let us take moment about B and find RA. 
or A is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive, and the distance is L. Both of these two movements are acting in the clockwise direction, so both of them are positive. For R A, we will get a negative value. That means the assumed direction is incorrect. Here I have changed the direction of R A. By applying this rule, we will get R B. For R B, we will get a positive value. That means it is acting upwards. In the fourth row and in the fourth column, we can verify these three and these three. We have to only enter K44. That is MBA. Here MBA is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive. We have found all of the elements in the stiffness matrix. You can see that in all of them EA is common. We can take EA outside. Now let us see how to memorize this matrix. K11, K22, K33 and K44 are the diagonal members. They will be positive. K12 and K21 will be same. K13 and K31 will be same. Similarly, K14 and K41 will be same. Let us take K12. If we write 1, 2 reversely, it will be K21. In the similar way, K23 will be equal to K32. K14 will be equal to K41. Now let us separate the matrix into four parts like this. These two are same except two changes here negative negative but here positive and positive. These two are also same except to the changes in the sign here it is positive here negative here it is negative but here it is positive. This column will be equal to this column except to the change of the signs here positive here negative negative positive negative positive negative and positive. Let us take these two columns here 4 upon L and 2 upon L are interchanged. In the similar way you can take the row also. For example if you take these two rows both of them have the same numbers except the change in sign and if you take these two rows these two are interchanged. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.